Now, Pierre Francois Jumeau, who was the patriarch, the father of the Jumeau firm, had two sons, Georges and Emile uh, Jumeau. And Georges was the older son. He was destined to take over the leadership of the firm. And Emile, who was kind of a fun loving guy, was there working, but he wasn't going to be the new patriarch of the firm until suddenly George died. And Emile had to step to the front. Now, Emile had different ideas than his father did. His father was conservative, traditional. We do things slowly. We, we go about them in a very, very traditional way. Emile Jumeau, he was bells and whistles. He wanted to grow this firm. He wanted to expand it. He wanted to bring in new types of things. And the first thing he did was recognize that the new doll, this is now 1877, the new doll of the future was not the lady or poupée doll. The new doll was going to be the child doll, which we refer to very simply as the bébé. And Emile Jumeau made this doll so significant in the years to come that his name became virtually synonymous with the word bébé. When you said Jumeau, you thought bébé. So much so that by 1950, more than 125 years later, the dolls were still being made in France, owned by another company at that time, but they still used the name Jumeau. So significant was this. Now, Emile Jumeau said, we're going to introduce this child doll, but they kind of really didn't know how to make it. They, didn't, they, they had to try out different things. First of all, they had to make the proportions differently. The lady doll had was a, long, a small head and a long, slender body, elongated. The child doll was different. She had to have a shorter, squatter body and a rounder face. So things had to be adjusted, had to be manipulated to come up with the right one. The first doll of Jumeau that is one that we call the Bebe Premier, the first model doll. And this is an example. When you're really lucky, you can find them with, as this example that I'm showing you, with their original lamb's wool wig. The Jumeau firm moved very, very quickly into gorgeous, finest quality mohair wigs made of uh, the underbelly of the Tibetan goat. I, I really mean that. And the hair was not the underbelly, but the hair from the underbelly. I guess I better correct that. Um, very, very finely designed and woven mohair wigs. But at the very beginning, it was actual lamb's wool, as this is. And the doll has eyes that are so big and so dramatic, they almost appear to be like oversized for the doll. Again, they were trying different things. Look at the decoration on the face. Very, very tentative, very simplistic. They weren't sure quite how to do this decoration, so they tried different things. And when you are lucky enough to ever find a doll from this very first period, the model known as the Bebe Premier by Jumeau, you will find one that will have the larger eyes, sometimes called wraparound eyes, and um, having the very delicate, tentative painting of the lashes and the brows and the lips. This beautiful little girl, I'm going to turn her around so you can see her, has her all original costume, which is highly to be desirable. And there she is, in a wonderful size, very desirable size to find this little cabinet doll. Now, I wanted to show you, I told you that the face of the bebe was evolving from the fashion face, and I'm bringing this fashion doll back that I showed you a few moments ago to show you, as you can see, the evolution of the fashion face right here to the bebe face with the same quality of bisque, the same basic facial mask, but made rounder, eyes made slightly larger, and the same type of decoration that you will find on these dolls. This particular doll has a very, very distinctive eye that was done at the time, and these are called the enamel spiral threaded eyes. There's a wonderful um, description in the Jumeau book where you um, see how these eyes were made. Actually, they were made by young girls, and they would sit at the works, and they would have in one hand the, um, the rod, and in the other hand the glass, and they would do the pupil, and then they would do the blue, and then they would do, take another rod and very, very fine spiral detailing of the eyes, and they're, they're absolutely quite magnificent. In a short time to come, Jumeau introduced what he called human eyes. We, as today, refer to them as paperweight eyes, which frankly I think is a more flattering term, and the difference being it doesn't have this very distinctive threading 
in the eyes, but it does have the final step that was done was a drop of clear crystal on the top of the eye that formed this crystalline-like effect, what we call the paperweight effect. So you have to choose which type of eye you like, um, and they appeared at different times in different models of the dolls. I'm personally such a great fan of the spiral threading eyes. I really love them, and if you read my catalog descriptions, you'll know I really kind of tend to go on and on about them. Uh, different things you'll, you'll find in the decoration of the dolls at this point. Notice the rose blushing, the rose eye shadow, and the rose blushing on her cheeks, and very, again, very, very tentative um, painting of, of the features, very shy. I wanted to read you um, a description, or something that we had um, written in the Jumeau book. The Bebe Jumeau, or this is in the, my book, The Beautiful Jumeau. The Bebe Jumeau personified the concept of classic beauty that prevailed during this last quarter of the 19th century. The concept was later described in a 1911 retrospe retrospective book called The Classic Point of View, written by a scholar, Kenyon Cox, and he was describing what was considered the classic sense of beauty, which was simply a quaint, sweet feeling. The classic spirit, he explained, was a search for perfection. It asks of a work of art, not that it should be novel or effective, but that it shall be fine and noble. And that is truly the personification of the French doll at this time and reaching its greatest heights by the works of Emile Jumeau. This is a very, very lovely doll with a beautiful um, silk crepe uh, coral dress with wonderful um, detail of embroidery on the length of the dress and then a wonderful hat with the rose um, flowers going down. The doll has signed leather shoes made at the same time as the Jumeau Bebés, but not from the Jumeau factory. It has the CC initials for another manufacturer who specialized only in doll shoes and initial CC. So in so many ways, this particular Jumeau, early Jumeau, now well, let's discuss the difference between what is a premier Jumeau and a portrait Jumeau. Well, you know, they're both terms that we as doll people today have given to the dolls. This is not something that, that uh, Jumeau used in his advertising. A uh, premier Jumeau, we tend to call the very early, early ones with almost simple kind of decoration. And the portrait Jumeaux um, or luxury Jumeaux were the ones that were done about the same time, about 1878, but have really great refinement of painting and eyes and costume. Jumeaux actually, and this goes back to what I said about bodies a few minutes ago, Jumeaux actually advertised his dolls as bebes in kasab which means unbreakable dolls. Well, clearly, anyone who's ever had the misfortune to drop one of their jumeaux on the ground knows these dolls are not unbreakable because we're talking about the heads. But he wasn't. He was talking about the bodies. This was a really big issue to all of the French doll makers at this time, to design a body that could be was highly um, able to be articulated, that could have costumes put on it that would be dressed and undressed, and that was realistic of the form of a lady or a child. At, at the time that it was being made. So this was, when they say Bebe and Kassab, they meant the body. And so here we have a very beautiful smell. And look at these eyes. Now these eyes, once again, these are the enamel eyes. These are not the paperweight eyes that came a little bit later. They have very large black pupils. And then they have the blue coloring of the iris with the spiral threading threaded throughout. These are all entirely handmade. Imagine how long. And then each eyes that were made had to be um, rested overnight to cool down before they could be put into the doll. Every step was significant. Very, very delicate pale bisque. She again, I'm taking her little hat off. She's kind of lost some of her lamb's wool hair over the years, but she has her original lamb's wool wig, which is very, very desirable. And very delicate bisque that really dramatizes those large paperweight eyes she has, and a wonderful antique costume of the period. Very, very fine. As years went by, um, Emile Jumeau's wife, Ernestine Jumeau, took over the atelier of the company that was concerned with the making of the doll costumes. And they issued, just like a, a fashion designer today has new costumes coming out twice a year, the spring, fall, spring and fall showings, Ernestine Jumeau would have new costumes coming out for her dolls in the spring and the fall that echoed the fashion of 
that year in Paris for children. So it was a really important statement that would be made. And these are almost sisters, by the way. And these, this girl also has enamel eyes. She's slightly larger. And she has brown eyes. The ratio of eyes being made at the time were 60% blue and 40% brown. And most of the doll makers made blue eyes. That was what was considered that people would want. But Jumeau thought, you know, kids have brown eyes too. We need to make some. So he moved forward into making them in the brown eyes as well. And I'm going to show you a couple bodies now before we go any further because I want you to understand what it means when you read a description and it talks about the Jumeau body. In the early Jumeaux, you'll very hear the, often hear the description made of eight loose ball joints. And that is right here. And they're very, very large balls here, 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 here. So eight loose ball joints on the body, straight wrist on the body. And the bodies had these wonderful large ball joints. And the idea was to try to find a body that could articulate well, that could you could have it sit, kneel, stand. The child could do all sorts of activities with a doll in a very, very realistic pose, unlike the old fashioned poupees that were rigid and you couldn't move them. You could dress and undress them and hold them, but you couldn't put them in seated positions. So the doll makers of this time, and particularly Jumeau, worked really hard on uh, make, designing this doll. And by the way, I'm going to turn it around. Look at this really little fat behind. And then on here again, you're going to find that marking Jumeau Medal d'Or Paris. And that means what? This body was made after 1878 when Jumeau won his gold medal award in Paris. Also, the earlier the bodies, the fatter they will be. I'm going to show you another one now. And this body would be from 1888 to 1890 period. This is also a Jumeau body. Look, no separate ball joints. Even on the legs, when you have ball joints, they are attached. They're part of it. There's a, a niche, like a shelf there, so you can still bend the leg back very nicely, but all of the ball joints are now connected to the limbs themselves. So completely different, and as you can see, a much more slender little body. When you get into the 1890s, the bodies get even more taller and slender, following fashions of the times. And then another beautiful doll from this early luxury period I have because I think the costume on this is extraordinary and I wanted to make sure you saw it. This would be an original um, costume from the Jumeau factory. That beautiful torsion lace, that very heavy cotton lace. Sometimes, now there's a little bit of sparsity on the silk of this, and sometimes collectors say, oh, I, I can't take that. I'm, I'm going to take that off and get that doll a new dress. Don't do that. This is so rare to find these wonderful silks in their original costume, so please do keep them. And she has a wonderful pair of antique shoes. These, again, were antique shoes of the period, but not Jumeau shoes, just made in that style, but made in a small... Um, small studio. There were hundreds of these studios throughout Paris. Just When I say a studio, I mean somebody's small little room where they specialized in making anything from a garter for a doll to the shoes for a doll to any of the simple fineries, a little piece of jewelry that that doll would have. And there, it was the doll was such a big feature in Paris at this time that all of these studios could be supported. And then one more doll from this earlier period, but now edging a little bit further along. And if you can see the difference in these two dolls, for example, what you're going to see when you look carefully is, an, is there's like a new refinement in the painting. It's almost as though now Jumeau had a quality inspector and everything that was painted, because these really, there are photographs taken of the work going on in the Jumeau factory. And the women were sitting before these tall windows and they would have a model and they would, uh, you know, a head that was perfectly painted, and they were to attempt to achieve that. But each face was painted individually by people. So when you're looking at a doll today and choosing which one you want, and why would the same model, why would you say, well, this one I like and this one I don't? Well, that's because that person's painting appeals to you. It, it speaks to you. And I've heard so many people say this about, about a doll. Oh, the doll just spoke to me. Of course it does. It's a work of art. 
And so you can see here the two different paintings, and you can see the little blonde girl getting a little more refined, a little more perfected, and wearing, by the way, an original Jameau chemise. These chemises would have appeared underneath the um, original, the final the beautiful silk costume that would have been on the doll. Sadly, she doesn't own hers anymore, but she always did modestly keep her little chemise. And she has shoes that have the marking of a full figure of a doll standing in a chemise. These were not Jameau shoes either. These were made by yet another Parisian shoemaker whose name was El Art. And these shoes were made, oh, from like 1880 right on into about 1915 with that, with that symbol. Very, very fine quality French doll shoe.